So now we're going to move on to the third level. And you heard me starting to talk about the valves, so now we're going to get a little bit more in depth into them. So this diagram, you can still draw it out very simple on paper. You just draw your heart, you draw the plus sign right over it, you put the arrows in, and just draw the arrows around like an infinity sign. So it's very easy. You can draw on a test paper when it comes time for an exam. So now we're going to talk about the four valves. As noted down here in the below, you have two AV valves, you have two SL. AV, atrial, ventricular. They're going to be located between the atrium and the ventricle on each side. SL are the semilunars. Those are going to be the ones leaving from the ventricles going out uh, their respective great vessels. So the first ones we're putting in here, highlighted in purple, are going to be the AV valves. As I mentioned, atrial ventricular because they're located between the atrium and the ventricle on each side. The right on the right and the left on the left. The next thing to do is to take these valves and to assign the special names that you'll probably hear more commonly out there in the hospital or clinical setting. There are three names, but you notice there are only two valves. So one of them has two names and one of them has three names. There's bicuspid, mitral, and tricuspid. So another person told me a really nice way to remember what side uh, which of these are on. If you think about math, and you see that triangle show up there. In math, we only have right triangles. We don't have left triangles. So you take right and try. It's telling you that the right AV valve is going to be the tricuspid valve. So the left AV is going to have the other two names. As well, somebody told me if you uh, take a look at the names, you see by, bi, and my, am I here. Tri has the three letters, so it doesn't really go along with them. So by and my, those two are going to go together. They're going to go together on the left side. So our left AV is known as the bicuspid and the mitral. Our right AV is also known as the tricuspid valve. So moving on, we'll go to our SL valves. We have a right and we have a left. Again, SL is for semi-lunar valves. But something to take note of here again. As you notice, I'm just drawing a diagram that's going to help you in terms of getting from point A to point B to point C of answering questions on an exam. Not right now for labeling the regions of the heart. That's going to be level 5. But again, if you look, here's a line and it's coming out from the lateral portion of the heart, the right ventricle. But over here, you don't see a, a vessel or a space coming out of the right ventricle. It actually goes up and out. So from the right ventricle in the real heart, it goes up and out and the valve is located right there. So I'm not trying to draw perfectly or else I'll draw the valve over here but things are going to get confusing if I do it that way. So that's why I'm drawing it this way at this point. Again, in the other levels we'll get to drawing the lines a little bit better. So same thing here with the semi-lunar valves. We need to assign their special names. In this case there's one for each. There's a pulmonary and there's an aortic. So that's why I stressed before that you remember pulmonary means that we're going to the lungs. So the one that's going over to the lungs, which is going to be on the right side, that's going to be called the pulmonary valve. Also, pulmonic valve is used. And then on the other side, you're going to have your aortic valve because it's going to be uh, part of the aorta. So now your diagram should start to look like this. You have the infinity sign placed over the chambers. You also have your four valves. If you're drawing this on a piece of paper, you can just draw a circle and fill it in or an oval and fill it in and just label your valves, but also try to always remember the names of your other valves. For example, the left AV is also known as the bicuspid or the mitral. The right AV is also known as the tricuspid. So when it comes time to an exam, you're not worried about looking or thinking about the answer. The answer is already going to be written for you on your diagram. So that's it for level three. Now this is the last level before I have some questions ready for you. We're going to include the blood vessels now, the major ones. When you're talking about the cardiovascular system and you hear arteries and you hear veins and you hear vessels, sometimes vessels and veins get confused. Arteries and veins are subgroups to vessels. So an artery is a vessel and a vein is a vessel. What's the difference between arteries and veins? Well, they always say A for arteries, A for away. Away from what? As it's written down there, away from the heart. So anything that's going to be an artery is going to pump blood away from the heart. Anything that's a vein is going to bring blood back to the heart. Now there's another word I hope you guys remember that means to the lungs, and that's pulmonary. So pulmonary arteries are the ones going to the lungs, away from the heart, 
and pulmonary veins are the ones that are going back. You will see the difference in color why I did that in a moment. And then over on the other side, you have the aorta, which is going to be the big vessel pumping blood out of the left ventricle. And then you have blood coming back to the right atrium on the superior and inferior vena cava. If you're talking about one, such as superior, you would say superior vena cava. If it's the other one, inferior vena cava. And I pronounced it incorrectly right when I first said it. But if you're saying more than one, you would say superior and inferior vena cava. You would put an E at the end of each of those A's. It would be V-E-N-A-E and -E C-A-V-A-E. Anytime you see that A and the E at the end, it's a plural, and you just don't pronounce that A. So you go straight to the E. Okay. So another thing you can add into here is the pulmonary trunk. If you look at the diagram of the real diagram, the real drawing of the heart, you'll see the right, right ventricle. The blood goes up through the pulmonary trunk and then branches out. I use these words trunk and branch because think about a tree. If there's a tree, you have one big trunk and then there's branches that come off the tree. As you see here, the arteries as well uh, become two on each side. So that's what I'm drawing here. Is here's the big pulmonary trunk and then you're getting the branches off the tree trunk which are going to be your pulmonary arteries. So this is why I changed the colors is because I'm talking about oxygen level. Usually, if you look at the veins on your hand, you look at the veins, and you'll see your veins have more of a bluish color. Blue doesn't mean that it's a vein. As you notice up at the top left, it says pulmonary vein is O2 rich. There's more of a bright color when hemoglobin binds to oxygen, a more bright red color. So they draw uh, anything that's rich in oxygen with a red color. But look, pulmonary vein, and it's rich. Why is this O2 rich? Well, travel back a little bit and you'll notice that it's coming from the lungs. The lungs is our source of oxygen. So anything coming after that is going to be oxygen rich. Anything heading to the lungs is going to be oxygen poor. You might hear the word deoxygenated, but what does D mean? D means without, but it's not actually without oxygen. It comes back to the alveoli with at least 40 millimeters of mercury of pressure of oxygen, which I'll show you in a picture in the next slide. However, it's better to get used to saying oxygen poor instead of deoxygenated because it's just poor. It has 40 versus after it has a little bit over 100, about 104 millimeters of mercury of oxygen. So it's going oxygen rich. It's going into the left atrium through the valve and out. And why or what's the purpose of the oxygen is we want to deliver it to the cells of the body so we can provide them the nourishment that they need. And then the body uses that oxygen, so it's going to become oxygen poor. So we're going to drop down from the 104 to about 40, and we're going to go back to pick up from the lungs again. And the reason that you see here is you have two pulmonary uh, arteries, actually you have four, two to each side, is because you have a branch to the right side, and you have a branch to the left side as well. And then down here you have your pulmonary and systemic circuits. So using this diagram, you should be able to answer many exam questions dealing with blood flow. This is just what I was talking about, showing you here that this is the basically the capillaries around the alveoli, and they're coming in with about 40 millimeters of mercury of oxygen. So it's not deoxygenated, it's just oxygen poor. And then after it picks up, it becomes oxygen rich about 104 millimeters of mercury of pressure of oxygen. 